I'm so glad to be in God's house this morning, and just a blessing to be able to come in and worship and lift up the name of God, and just all that He's allowed us to do this week, and uh, we, we did send some, some support over to uh, that organization we talked about, a guy from Kentucky partnered with us, um, and, and we was able to give even more beyond what we said, so I just sure feel uh, just sure feel such appreciation for being able to to help, but we need to continue to send prayers and Lord just support them. And uh, you know, you know, it's come to our neighborhood before too. It's not been pleasant, uh, but God's got us through it, and He'll continue to get us through it. And uh, and guys, all these all things are that we're seeing are birthing pains for the coming of the Lord and Savior. We know that it's going to get worse and worse in all ways, uh, but I know that there's a place that can't get any better than what it's going to be prepared for us, that we don't have to worry about flooding, we don't have to worry about trees breaking, we don't have to worry about power outages, we don't have to worry about sickness or pain. I'm looking forward to that time we get to go to heaven. Um, until then, there's something that uh, the Lord has laid on my heart that I believe will be of help to everybody in here this morning. I think that you're either in this situation or uh, you're going to be or you have been. You find yourself in a, in a place in your walk with God where you just don't feel anything. You just don't feel anything. You, don't, you want to feel something. You really want to feel that nudge, that tug, but it just seems that you exist. And if you feel anything, you feel pain and sorrow. You feel hurt. You feel discouraged. You feel worn out. You don't feel the what you want to feel. And we all like to feel like we feel when we have revivals and we have jubilee and we have events and it, and it gets us excited. But there's sometimes in a walk with God where you just find yourself not feeling anything at all. What if I told you this morning that because you feel that way or if you feel that way doesn't mean you are necessarily doing anything wrong? Doesn't mean that you're in left field. Doesn't mean that you're, the judgment of God has come down upon you. But sometimes that is just how God designed the Christian walk to be. That sometimes there's good times and sometimes there's bad times. And sometimes there's times when you feel all the warmth and you feel like shouting and you're overwhelmed. And there's sometimes when you just don't feel like doing anything. I'm not preaching to you anything new. I'm going to show you something in the Bible that will help you this morning along those lines. If you have your Bible, turn over to Isaiah chapter number 50. Isaiah chapter number 50. We're going to preach out of just one verse this morning. Those of you who are in Wednesday night service are not surprised that I would preach for 45 minutes out of one verse. Because we, we spend months in a verse sometimes. But I won't keep you a month this morning. Isaiah chapter number 50. If you found your place, you'd stand to your feet for honor and reverence to the reading of God's word. If you found your place this morning, would you say amen? amen. Isaiah chapter number 50. It should say something at the beginning if, if you have any headings in your Bible. It says something like the suffering of the Lord's servant. Talking about Jesus himself. That's what we're looking at. The, this is the coming Messiah. Verse number 50, chapter, I mean verse number 10 in chapter number 50, it says this. Who is among you that feareth the Lord, that obeyeth the voice of his servant, that walketh in darkness and hath no light? Let him trust in the name of the Lord and stay upon his God. This morning I'm going to preach a message to you entitled... What to do when you feel nothing. What to do when you feel nothing. Before I do, let us pray. Heavenly Father, God, we sure thank you for the word of God, Lord, and the way you impressed it on our hearts. Lord, as we studied this message, God, we, Lord, we had a broken heart, Lord, for the people that are here this morning, God, because we know that you know every need, you know every condition. God, you know every emotional situation, God, and we're, we're so thankful Lord, you don't just know them, Lord, but you're, you have a desire to help and you will help. And God, we pray you do something this, in this service this morning we'd never get over. And God, we ask this all in Jesus' name. And the church said, Amen. Amen. You be seated. Thank you for standing this morning. Here we see Scripture says, here's a guy, now notice verse number 10, here's a guy 
Who is among you that feareth the Lord, that obeyeth the voice of his servant, and walketh in darkness? Here's a guy who fears and obeys his servant, meaning Jesus, yet he walks in darkness. Yet he walks in darkness. If he feels anything, I would say that he feels fear, discouragement, pain, sorrow, the overall feeling that he just don't have it together. You ever feel like that? Like you just don't have it together? Like everything that you touch falls apart. Your week's just not going well. Uh, when you walk out of the room, uh, something happens, something falls. You keep dropping things. It just seems like it ain't your week. It might not even be your month. It might not even be your year. Uh, that you just feel like things are just not together. If you feel anything, it's discouragement. If you feel anything, it's pain. If you feel anything, it's frustration. If you feel anything, it's aggravation. Uh, if you ever feel, am, I, am I preaching to myself? Or you may feel that way that you just feel like it just ain't going right. Uh, you're doing it everything that you know to do, you're, you're serving God, you're, you're going through all the things that, that God has told you to do and you just uh, don't feel like you want to feel. That doesn't really line up with feel good Christianity. Where it says you do all these things and goodness it will always follow you. But no, no, that, that ain't how it works. Goodness don't always follow you. I know goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And when we look at that verse in Psalms 23, that doesn't mean that bad things are never going to happen to Christian people. And that sometimes bad things just happen. But what that means is that God is still good when the bad things happen. And God is still with you when the bad things happen. But bad things will happen when you serve God. The world of darkness means misery. It gives the idea of stumbling, not knowing which way to go, downright fear of the situation before you. Fear and trembling when you look forward and don't know how to proceed or, or even if you can proceed. You never hoped you'd find yourself in this situation, never dreamed you would find yourself where you are right now. But yet we see that this, this guy here in the scripture, this person, who is he that feareth the Lord, that obeyeth the voice of his servant? I don't read where he went to the left field. I don't read where he did the wrong thing. I don't read where he wasn't attending church, where he wasn't reading his Bible, or wasn't doing the right thing. But it said, here's a guy that obeys the voice of his servant. Here's a guy God that fears the Lord. He's doing everything right. So why is bad things happening? Because sometimes it does. The Bible says it rains on the just and the unjust. That sometimes you just find yourself in a tough situation. Now, the solution is simple, but it's not easy. If you find yourself in a scenario like that. First thing I want to show you is this. Trust in the name of the Lord. It says, Behold, the, it says here, Who is among you that feareth the Lord, that obeyeth the voice of his servant, that walketh in darkness and hath no light? Then there's a solution. Let him trust in the name of the Lord. Trust in his character and his personhood. Psalm 119, 42 says, So shall I have wherewith to answer him that reproacheth me, for I trust in thy word. And now when, I, when you hear the idea of trusting in the name of the Lord or trusting in the word of God, that does not give the idea of feelings associated uh, when you just trust in the word. You know why? Because you're looking at this old book and you're saying, I might not feel it. I don't feel good on the inside right now, but I know that God is true to his word. I know he's who he says he was. I know he's, that he is, he was, and is to come, and I can Trust in the word of God even if I don't feel like it. Even if I don't have good feelings on the inside. Even if everything's not going the right way. I can trust in your word. Yeah. It's true. It'll help us. And that's the thing is. Feel good Christianity says you just need to do better. You just need to uh, get with God and you just need to praise Him and uh, everything will be all right and you'll feel better. But sometimes uh, the only thing that you have to trust is the written word right here and read in here and say, God, I don't feel anything. Uh, God, I don't feel all, nothing on the inside. Uh, God, I don't feel that well and up spring that makes me feel so good. But what I do know is that your word is true and you said I'd never leave you, I'd never forsake you. I'd go all the way with you even in the end of the world and even though that I don't feel it right now I'm going to just keep trusting in you because I know that one of these days if I keep on trusting in your word that something's going to happen something's going to break free and suddenly I'm going to feel the thing that I want to feel what to do when you feel nothing well who does the Bible say that he is I don't think I can put it any better than this I hope this will help you 
Reverend S.M. Lockridge put it this way. So wherever that you are, whatever situation you're facing, this is what S.M. Lockridge said about the Lord God as written in the Bible. When you say trust in the name of the Lord, this is what he said. He said, my king was a born king. The Bible says he's a seven-way king. He's the king of the Jews. That's a racial king. He's the king of Israel. That's a national king. He's the king of righteousness. He's the king of the ages. He's the king of heaven. He's the king of glory. He's the king of kings, and he's the Lord of lords. Now that's my king. King. I wonder, do you know him? Do you know him this morning, Living Waters Independent Baptist? Uh, don't try to mislead me. Do you know my king? Uh, David said, the heavens declare the glory of God, and the firmament shows handiwork. Uh, my, no far-seeing telescope can bring in the visibility to the coastline of his shore of supplies. No barrier can hinder him uh, from pouring out his blessing. He's enduringly strong. He's entirely sincere. He's eternally steadfast. He's immortally graceful. He's imperially powerful. He's impartially merciful. Uh, that's my king. He's God the Son, and he's Son of God. Uh, he's the center Savior. He's the centerpiece of civilization. He stands alone in himself. He's honest. He's unique. He's unparalleled. He's unprecedented. He's supreme. He's preeminent. Well, he's the grandest idea in literature. He's the highest personality in philosophy. He's the supreme problem in high criticism. He's the fundamental doctrine of proof theology. He's the cardinal necessity of spiritual religion. Uh, that's my king. He's the miracle of the age. He's the superlative of everything good that you choose to call him. Uh, he's the only one able to supply all of our needs simultaneously. I'm glad when I give an altar call here in a minute uh, that he can supply everybody's needs in here at the same time. You don't have to come and wait in line. You don't have to wait until it's your turn. Uh, but God's big enough that he can help everybody in here out at the same time. He supplies strength for the weak. He's available for the tempted and the tried. He sympathizes and he saves. He's strong God and he guides. He heals the sick. He cleanses the lepers. He forgives sinners. He discharges debtors. He delivers the captives. He defends the feebles. He blesses the young. He serves the unfortunate. He regards the aged. He rewards the diligent and he beautifies the meek. Uh, do you know him this morning? You know what I'm talking about? Is that resounding with you about what situation you're facing? Oh, well, he's my king. He's a king of knowledge. He's a wellspring of wisdom. He's the doorway of deliverance. He's the pathway of peace. He's the roadway of righteousness. He's the highway of holiness. He's the gateway of glory. He's the master of the mighty. He's the captain of the conquerors. He's the head of the heroes, the leader of the legislatures, the overseer of the overcomers, the governor of governors, the prince of princes, the king of kings, and the lord of lords. If we're going to elect somebody here in a month, but let me tell you something, they don't supersede my God. There's no Trump bigger than my God. There's no Biden bigger than my God. There's no Harris bigger than my God because whoever gets on the throne, my God's still above him. Amen. This morning, he's my king. That's my king. Yes, give him a hand clap of praise this morning. His office is manifold. His promise is sure. His light is matchless. His goodness is limitless. His mercy is everlasting. His love never changes. His word is enough. His grace is sufficient. His reign is righteous. His yoke is easy and his burden is light. Oh, well, I wish I could describe him to you. I'm trying to do my best, but he's indescribable this morning. He's incomprehensible. He's invincible. He's irresistible. I'm coming to tell you the heavens cannot contain him, let alone a man explain him. You can't get him out of your mind. You can't get him off your hands. You can't outlive him and you can't live without him. Him. Uh, the, the, the Pharisees couldn't stand him, uh, but they couldn't find any fault with him. Uh, but they found they couldn't stop him. Uh, Pilate couldn't find any fault with him. The witnesses couldn't get their testimonies to agree. Herod couldn't kill him, and death couldn't handle him, and the grave couldn't hold him. Uh, so who's the person of God uh, that I'm talking about this morning? I'm telling you uh, that his character is enough. Who he is is enough. Uh, what he is in Scripture is enough. If you don't feel anything this morning, he's still enough. If you walked up with a pooch mouth, he's still enough. He's everything that you look for. He, if you're in the valley this morning, he is the lily of the valley. He is the bright and morning star. He's the sweet rose of Sharon. He's everything good in my life. He's everything that I've ever had accomplished in my life is because of him. If there's money in my bank, it's because of him. If there's, if there's a breath in my kids' lungs, it's because of him. If I'm able to walk in this church house, it's because of him. And can I tell you this morning, you might not feel anything. That don't change the character of God because God is still on the throne and God is still in control and God still hears your prayers even though that you might not think that he does. I'm glad that he's never asleep. He's always awake. He's always a He's always alert, always listening to what we need. And I'm telling you this morning, if you have a need from God, and I don't care what you feel, Satan says that you lost it. Oh, I'm glad this morning you can't lose your salvation. And just like that, you can't lose the Spirit of God. Oh, why? Because He's always there. He's omniscient. He's omnipotent. He's always present with us. And I'm glad this morning to tell you, uh, to report to you from a far land, you might have walked in here sad. Uh, you might have walked in here defeated. Uh, but you can trust in His Word this morning. Amen. We can trust in the name of the Lord. That name is enough this morning. 
That name is a, there's something that the old song said. There's something about that name, just the name. The Bible says that at that name, name uh, that, that every tongue that every tongue will confess, every knee shall bow and confess He's the Son of God. Uh, the devils tremble at that name. Uh, the graves will tremble at that name. Uh, just that name alone, my friend, is something powerful. Uh, something that will do something. I I was telling Brooke we had Silas, uh, we had Jesse anointed with oil on Wednesday night uh, because I felt like he was kind of colic. I didn't know what was going on, uh, but I told Brooke when the Lord puts something like that on your heart, uh, the best thing you can do is just trust that the Bible is true and do what God told you to do. I don't know what was going on with you. He might have had cancer for all I know, uh, but I know that something changed that moment. And when we got home, what he was doing, it's not been there since. Why is that? Because I can trust in the name of the Lord and when everything's not going right and I feel like I'm going down the wrong direction, I can trust in the name of the Lord. But number two, look at this, trust in the power of staying. Trust in the power of staying. It says, let him trust in the name of the Lord. And it says, stay upon his God. Stay upon his God. Lean on, trust. When I look at that word, that, that idea of staying, it means, it means to lean on. Friend, when you lean on people, when you lean on people, if I lean on Jordan... I believe Jordan's a solid guy, don't you? He's a guy in the church that he's, he's a deacon in this church. And if I tell Jordan something or something, one of you all are going through something and I need to talk to somebody about a situation, I can tell Jordan. And when I tell Jordan, it dies with Jordan. I don't have to worry about anybody else knowing it. He don't tell anybody, but I believe he's a solid guy. But if I lean on him long enough, he's going to let me down. Why? Because he's human being. Human beings will fail you. Human beings will shift on you because uh, they go through storms just like you go through storms. And uh, no matter how strong somebody seems to be, they will fail you. Uh, but there's a God that you can lean on that you don't have to worry about Him ever shifting, about Him ever turning. Uh, uh, that's why that you don't lean on the help of man, but you lean on God. You uh, put all your weight against Him. And sometimes when you lean on somebody and you've got all of your weight on them, sometimes God will move that person out of your way. So you fall to realize he is the one you got to lean on. Amen. Not your mama, not your daddy, not your sister, not your brother, but God alone will never leave you, never forsake you. I'm not the dad that I need to be all the time, and Brooke's not the mom she needs to be all the time. We strive to be our best, uh, but there's times we're going to fail. That's why I want to put point Silas and Jesse uh, towards a God and a rock that they'll never fail, uh, that he'll always be there for them when mom and daddy won't answer the phone. Uh, there's a God in heaven right there. that He's a God you can lean on, but he's also a God you can rest on. He said, come on to me that we can heavy laden, I'll give you rest. You never rested like there is resting in Jesus. I like Sunday evenings, I like to get home. Those of y'all who know me well, six days of the week, I get up at 5.30 and work out. The seventh day I get up at 5.30, but I don't work out. I just kick back on the couch that morning, read the Bible, meditate. Don't have to really do much besides let the chickens out and go feed the goats, but that ain't too bad, so I just relax and do my thing. I like to rest like that, but that ain't rest like Jesus. That's just relaxation. They're the never found rest like you found when, when you know that Jesus is with you and that you can lean on Him. So we see that you can lean on Jesus. You can rest on Jesus. That, that staying on God, that's what that means. Uh, but you can also trust. Go back to that, that trust in the name of the Lord. You can trust Him. That He's bound by His Word and what He said in here, He will do. David of all said he'd lived a long life and never seen the righteous forsaken or seed begging bread. You can trust in his word and think to yourself, it might be bad, but you're not forsaken. You might be cast down, but you're not defeated and broken. God is still with you. Even if you don't feel all the things you want to feel, he's still with you. You can stay put right on him. Just with laser focus, say, I'm going to stay put. Uh, and, and I've said this before, I love everybody in here, and I'm glad that you're in the church, and I'm so thankful when we do things and you're there. I believe I can call on any one of you, and you'll be there with me. And if I, if I need you, you'll come and help me. Every one of you proved yourself to be that way. Uh, but can I tell you right now that there's a God in heaven uh, that, that I can call upon any time that I need him, and, and he's always there for me, and he gives gives me things uh, that nobody else can give me even though y'all will help me there's a God in heaven that uh, there's sometimes I go through things that only he can provide for me 
I can trust in Him and stay fixed and focused on what I'm doing for God. Uh, you know, I love y'all, uh, everybody in here, but I'm going to tell you right now uh, that if you decide to quit tomorrow, then I'm going to just keep on preaching. And if you decide you're not going to do it, I'm going to just keep on preaching. And if Brooke throws in the towel, I'm just going to keep on preaching. You know why? Uh, because that I'm not in this for Brooke and I'm not in this for y'all. I'm in this for God. And my hope is that you all say the same thing. They say, uh, Pastor, I'm glad that you're here and I'm glad to follow you. Uh, but if you quit, I'm going to keep on keeping on with laser focus. Because I'm going to stay on my God. I'm going to stay on Him. Keep doing what you're doing. Stay fixated on God. Job, when he had gone through what he went through, and everybody around him was telling to throw in the towel that everything was going wrong. He must, and that's the first thing we think. When bad things happen, we think they must be doing something wrong. Must be doing something wrong. I'm going to say something this morning. I know this might not sit too well. When natural disasters come to California, we say, how sinful. Those sinful, nasty people. When Hurricane Katrina came to New Orleans, we say, that's the most evil city in the world. It came to our mountains. Now what are we saying? Amen. What, what, what's my point? My point is, sometimes judgment comes, and it just comes. We don't need to try to look for a reason or point. Well, I bet it happened because of this, or I bet it happened because of this. Uh, it happened because God caused it and said it to happen, and he, we know that He is sovereign, and when He causes something or He says something, it's just going to happen, and we need to question why it happened. But that's why I, I gave that example to say we're very quick to cast judgment until it comes to our house. Right? When it happened to Pound a few years ago, we didn't say them people in Pound are the most evil people in the world. No, those are our people. People in East Tennessee are our people. Western North Carolina, there are people. Southwest Virginia, there are people. Sometimes things just happen, but this is what you got to say. What Job said. Job had a bunch of Baptists come around him too when he got in trouble. Tried to figure out what he did wrong, remember? Here come his buddies. Baptist number one and Baptist number two. Said, I know you must have done something wrong, Job. Even his wife said, curse the Lord and die. Job 13, 15 says, though he slay me, Yet will I trust in him, but I will maintain mine own ways before him. In other words, he said, quit ain't in me. Quit ain't in me. That's what we need to say. Quit, quit ain't in me. My dad told me growing up, he said, if you get in a fight with somebody, if they whoop you, they whoop you. But you need to make them, you need to make them realize that they've been in a fight. So he would, he would have the saying, I might not whoop you, but you'll know I've been there. That's what he taught me to say. What does that mean? That means I ain't quitting. In other words, if, if you whoop me today, every time you see me, you're going to have to try to fight me again. And eventually, they'll get tired of that. That's how we have to look at Satan when he starts discouraging us and our problem is saying, you know what, quit ain't in me. I'm just, I know I might feel defeated right now, but you know what? Uh, this situation is going to know I've been there when I'm done with it because I'm going to keep on fighting. I ain't quitting. I'm going to keep on swinging. I'm going to keep on trudging. And there's nothing that's going to make me quit. And if you will say that with God, say it with your church, say it with your walk with God, and say it, quit is not in me. Lots of people, they come up in a church and they're waiting. They're waiting for a crossword from somebody so they can quit. They want to quit. They're waiting for a situation. Waiting until somebody looks at them the wrong way. And, I, and uh, this lady said something to me the other day. I, I'll, just be, I'll just be completely transparent with you. There's a 75-year-old lady who's trying her everything within her to flirt with me the other day in line. <laughs> she was. She had, I had a cowboy hat on, and she was, well, you look like a cowboy. Have I seen you in a Western? I was sitting there thinking, honey, please stop this. So she found out I was a pastor about five minutes later, and she goes, oh, my goodness. I hope I didn't offend you. And I said, if you're a pastor and you're offended by that, you need to just throw in the towel right now. You've got to have thick skin. But can I tell you, not just for a pastor, for every child of God, you've got to have a thick skin when you serve the God and say, hey, I'm going to sit in a seat. I don't care what you say, what kind of snide remarks that you make. I don't care if you don't like what I'm doing. I'm in here for God. 
And if I'm in here for God, then I don't have to worry about anything else. You know why? Because as long as he's proud of it, it don't matter if everybody else is proud of it. And if you serve God long enough, somebody will say something about you at some point in time saying that, oh, you're this and you're that, or oh, I bet that you're this kind of way. And can I tell you right now, you might say, oh, I've not done anything. I've not, I've not, done, I've not made any mistakes. I don't know why they're saying that about me. I don't know why that they're dragging me through the mud. I just want to quit. I just want to throw in the towel. Jesus had people say stuff about him, and he was good. He did the right thing. We do the wrong thing. Might try our best. People accuse us. We want to quit. People accuse Jesus. What do you do? Just kept on. Just kept on. Just kept on. Though he slay me, I'll trust him. So, so what do you do when you don't feel nothing? When you don't feel what you want to feel, you just keep doing what you're doing. As I said 32 times in this, from this pulpit, when you don't know what, you, what to do, what do you do? You do what you know to do. You read your Bible, you attend church, you pray, and you trust in the name of God, and know that one of these days, you're going to be going along, and that pop, you're suddenly going to feel the thing you want to feel again. It might not be right now. It might not be a year from now, but one of these things going on, something's going to happen, and suddenly that warmth is going to come back in. Why does God do that? To teach you that this is enough. It's not about feelings. It's not how good that you feel when you come into church. I'm glad we feel good in church. I'm glad we can shout in church. But sometimes God will pull all of that away to show you this is enough. His name is enough. The book is enough. Stay in the book. Stay in the book. Stay in the, the, the Bible says he can get praise from a rock, didn't he? How do you break down a rock? With water. What's water symbol of? The Holy Spirit. You keep reading that, and you might be calloused, and you might feel like you're a rock, you might feel that you're hard on the inside, and then all of a sudden you'll feel that water start to trickle. So what do you do when you feel nothing? You keep doing what you're doing. Trust in the name of the Lord. Brother Eric, would you come up and help me? I'll come to close here in just a moment. Child of God, I want to ask you this morning as you came in here, I don't know what you're facing. I don't know what's on your heart or what's on your mind. And you might feel like you're just going through the motions and thinking, what am I doing wrong? And the Lord come by your way to tell you nothing. You just need to trust in the name of the Lord. Just stay on your God and he's going to see you through it. Now I want you to examine your own self this morning. Have you been calloused? Have you grown a little cold? And you think to yourself, why do I feel the way I feel? I want to feel. But friend, guys, we, we was not saved by feeling. And feeling ain't going to take us to heaven. The Word of God, trusting in that knowledge to know that we got a better place to go. That's what's going to get us over there. Would you stand your feet this morning, heads bowed, eyes closed, nobody looking around. Maybe this morning under the sound of my voice, you say, preacher, that's me. I feel nothing. I feel nothing. I'm calloused. I'm hard on the inside. And I just feel cold. If that's you, would you raise that hand this morning? Say, preacher, that's me. I see hands all over the house. Anybody else? Up and back down. Up and back down. Maybe you found yourself in a situation you never hoped you'd be in. If that's you this morning, maybe you slip that hand up and right back down. See that hand. See that hand. See that hand. Anyone else? Up and right back down. Just I see that hand. Anybody else? Now listen this morning. Maybe the reason you don't feel good or you don't feel what you want to. It might, not, it might be that you're not doing the right thing. Maybe I have many Christians here walking the right way, doing the right thing. Yet you feel the coldness. Maybe this morning you just have strayed in the last little bit. In fact, you would you just lift that hand up and right back down so I can pray for you. Just want to pray for you. Just me and God looking at you. Nobody looking around. You can lift it up. I'm not going to embarrass you. I'm not going to come get you after church or corner you. I just want to pray for you, friend. Hand up and right back down. See that hand. But lastly is this. You say, to me, you say this morning, preacher, I know the songs you've sung. I've heard what you've said. I don't know that I'm going to heaven, but I sure don't want to go to hell. If that's you this morning, would you lift that hand up and say, I'm not sure I'm going to heaven. 
but I sure don't want to go to hell. I just want to pray for you. Would you slip that hand up and let me pray for you this morning? Anybody in the house? Say, preacher, I'm not, I don't know I'm going to heaven, but I sure don't want to go to hell. Would you slip your hand up and right back down so I can pray for you? Heavenly Father, God, we want to pray, Lord Jesus, for the many hands that went up. Lord, the many people in here that maybe found themselves in a situation, Lord, where, Lord, they want to feel, but they can't feel. God, we pray, Lord Jesus, that you would please be with your people. God, we pray, Lord, you encourage their hearts and touch them. God, we pray you do a work this morning in their life. And God, we're going to trust that you'll do it in Jesus' name. We pray if that hand went up, maybe you just put feet behind that hand and come up here and say, God, I'm just going to trust in your word. Though you slay me, yet will I trust you. Though you take some of me precious, yet will I trust you. Would you come this morning?